Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 5.1, Operations with Polynomials. We're not going to waste any time as we jump right in, as we are asked to simplify, and we get to assume that no variable equals zero. So looking at number one, we're going to multiply all these variables together. When we multiply variables together, we get to add our exponents. So when I multiply this a times this a, I have a to the negative third plus two, right? I'm gonna write it like this right now. I have b to the fourth and then c to the minus one. Now I'm adding my variables together. So I have now a to the negative first, b to the fourth, and now c to the negative first again. Now we cannot have this, we cannot have these monomials with negative exponents. So with negative exponents, we move them down to the bottom of the fraction. So I'm going to rewrite this guy as b to the fourth, and that's going to be over the top of a to the first and c to the first, because when I brought these guys down below the fraction bar, it changed them into positive. So this is the final answer that we are looking for. Again with number two, what do we do with our numbers? We multiply our numbers. So I have two times negative seven, which is negative 14. I have x to the negative third times x to the fifth. When we multiply variables, we add their exponents. So it's gonna be negative three plus five and y to the negative third plus negative six. I get to rewrite this as negative 14 x to the positive second and y two negatives plus each other make a bigger negative to the negative nine. We have a negative 14 but that stays on top. It's just a negative number. x squared is fine because it's positive but we do have a negative nine so it's negative 14 x squared and that negative that negative is going to go to the bottom of the fraction so it's going to be y to the ninth on the bottom for our final simplified answer right here. Now with three, if multiplication between variables means addition, what do you think division between variables means? Division means that we have to subtract our exponent. So it's n and then to the second minus eight and that's going to give us n to the negative six. Now this negative six, where does it go? It goes to the bottom of the fraction. So it's n to the six on the bottom, but what goes on top, right? There was a one here. So if it moved to the bottom, what takes its place on top? A one simplified answer right there written with no negative exponents. Number four, same situation. We are dividing. When you see numbers, you still divide those numbers. So this guy turns into a negative five, 15 divided by negative three is negative five. We are left with c to the fifth minus two because we are dividing those. And then d, which is to the third minus seven. We are going to simplify this to get a negative five, c to the third, and a d to the negative fourth. Again, where do negative exponents go? This guy turn in, in, turns into negative five, c to the third over what? Over d to the fourth because of the negative exponent final answer simplified right there. Number five, now we have something outside parentheses. When we have something outside parentheses, we're gonna take it to every single exponent inside those parentheses. We're taking it to every single exponent inside those parentheses. So we come up with now, three squared, please remember it's three squared, and then it's a to the third, and when we have exponents to exponents, or powers to powers, we multiply. So it's gonna be three times two over, and then again, exponents to exponents, we multiply times two. I'm gonna clean this up. Please remember, three to the second is not six, but it is nine, it is a big nine. And now we multiply our variables, so it's going to be a to the sixth over b to the eighth for your simplified answer. 
Number six. Now it is a negative three. So when it's negative, inside or outside the parentheses, we have to flip these numbers. So I'm going to rewrite this guy as four over a, and then it's still to the third. Where does this three go? It goes to everything inside those parentheses. So it's going to be four to the third over a to the third, and that simplifies to 64 on top because it's four to the third, so it's four times four times four, over a to the third for your simplified answer. Now with number seven, please, please, please pay very close attention to that negative. That negative, you can do it a couple different ways. You can drop it all out of the parentheses and just change these signs, or you can act like it is a negative one, so you're gonna change the signs of all these guys. So now I have a negative a to the third, a positive three, a and a negative two. I'm gonna drop down what I had before in front, so it's two a cubed plus five, a minus seven. This negative only affects the stuff in back. Now I'm gonna combine like terms. So I'm gonna combine my apples. My cubes stay cubes, but I have two cubes here, minus one here, so it's going to be just one cube. Then I have this guy, which is a positive five and a positive three a. So if you have three apples sitting there, you and five apples, you add them together, you have eight delicious apples. And then here, which is a negative seven minus two, turns into a negative nine when we combine like terms, simplified answer. Eight, a little different with a plus. With a plus, you can just drop everything outside the parentheses, so it's 4x squared minus 9x plus 3 minus 2x squared. You could have a plus a minus, but plus a minus makes a minus, minus 5x minus 6. Combining like terms, here's an apple, and there I'm taking away two apples, so I have 2x squared. What are some more like terms? Here I have just a single x and just a single five. Those combine to give me a negative 14x. And then finally, I have negative six and a positive three, which makes a minus three. Now here with number nine, notice how there is nothing between the y and the parentheses. When there's nothing between that, that means I have to multiply. So I'm gonna take the y here, here, and here. So. I still have 4y, but now remember, back to the first slide, when we take a y times a y, what happens? We have to add those exponents. So I have y cubed plus 2y squared, because I'm, there is a 1 right here and a 1 right there, so I'm adding both of them, minus 3y, simplified right there. Now when you throw in another number or letter, what happens? Well, I'm going to take this A, and this A has to go here, it has to go here, and it has to go here a lot like when we multiply two binomials. So we have, or FOIL for that matter, so we have A cubed plus A plus 3A actually squared minus 4A to close off the first one. Now I have to take this two times there and here, and here, make sure every number gets multiplied in there. So I have a plus 2a squared, and then a plus 6a, as I'm close to running out of room, and then it's actually going to be a minus 8. Now let's combine like terms. Here, I have an a cubed. Do I have any other a cubes? I do not. So I have a cubed down here. Here I have an a squared. Do I have any other a squared? Sure do, right there. That turns into a plus 5a squared. How about any just plain old apples? I have negative four of them right there. I have plus six of them right there, so I have plus 2a. And then finally, my minus, my minus eight, it's a minus eight, and so there it is. Now I saved the best for last. Now we have some vocab words to cover. Vocab words that we might have seen before. Mononomial is the number, a variable, or the product of both, so you could have numbers being multiplied to variables. The degree of the mononomial is just the sum of exponents, exponents, exponents of the variables in the mononomial, 
and the degree of a polynomial is the degree of a monomial with the greatest degree. So you, for the degree of a polynomial, you pick out the monomial with the greatest degree. So now we're given some monomials. We are asked to find their degree. When it's just a number, the degree is zero. Now with this monomial, numbers do not have degrees, but this uh, x here has an exponent of one, correct? So that degree is one. Now here when it has, a, it doesn't matter about this one half, but this a and the b squared, we have one from the a plus two from the b, which gives us a degree of three. And how about here? It's still monomial. Doesn't matter that this is a decimal. We have five on the m, so we have a degree of five. Reasons why they wouldn't be a monomial. You cannot have, or you cannot divide by a variable. So it might look like this. You cannot have this. This would not be a variable. A monomial. This is not a monomial because we are adding. We cannot add. It's only a product. We cannot have variables be exponents. And again. This should be x minus 1, or even if it's x to the negative first, you can't subtract, and it's not, you cannot have a negative exponent. Now, also, please note that a binomial is a polynomial with two terms. A trinomial is a polynomial with three terms, just like the tricycle that you used to ride when you were younger, or the bicycle that you still ride now. So expression, is this a polynomial? Yes, it is. And what kind of polynomial is it? It is a monomial. The classification is, or the degree is, just zero. Here, is this a polynomial? Are all these monomials? Yes. What, or what is the degree? What is the highest degree here? Here's a two, here's a one, so my degree is two. My classification is a trinomial. Here, this is a monomial, yes, but is this is this a monomial with that n as an exponent? It is not. So this is not a polynomial. Therefore, I cannot have a degree or classification. Can this be a negative 2 and still be a polynomial? Can we have negative exponents? No, we cannot. So therefore, we do not have a degree in classification. And finally, is this a polynomial? Here we have 7b cubed. Here all this junk is being multiplied together. So since it's a product, yes, it is a polynomial. Um, the degree, what's the biggest deg degree? This is 3, but please remember, it's 4 plus 1. It's 4 plus 1, so our degree is 5, and it is a binomial. And the last slide, just to clear up anything, or just to give you some hints, basically a cheat sheet here of what we have to do. So if you have pro product of powers, where you are multiplying the same variable with different exponents, you add those, so you add exponents when you multiply. Quotient of powers, when you divide the same number, we have to subtract those exponents. These a and b, these a and b's are exponents, so we would subtract them. This is written algebraically. Negative exponents, we have a, x to the negative a, so that would go straight to the bottom. If it was already on bottom, it would come back up to the top, and it would just be this, or you could write it over 1. Power of a power. You have A inside being an exponent. B is outside. You, they come together, and you multiply them to get rid of the parentheses. Power of a product. So now this A goes here to the X and to the Y. So we represent that X to the A, Y to the A. Power of a quotient, same situation. This a has to go to the x and to the y represented here, or or and if it's a negative, you flip them, but they still get the exponents. Tricky part here is anything to the zero exponent, anything to the zero exponent is one. It doesn't matter if it's 1,100,042m squared, if that's all to the zero exponent. That is one. And that does it for section 5.1, operations with polynomials. Good day.